now on Fast Track News. The Purdue basketball teams are on winning streaks and refuse to lose. We'll take a look at how the women's team prepares to send IU home with a loss. Plus, the clock has run out for Purdue TikTok accounts. We will let you know how the university is navigating its exit from the app. And the relocation of the LGBTQ Center, where Boilers came to celebrate the grand opening on Friday. All your campus news, weather, and sports is straight ahead. Fast Track is back. Here comes the weekend, Boilers. A new month has arrived and the cold campus commutes have us looking forward to warmer weather and longer days that come in spring. I'm John Waterworth. And I'm Ella Chu. It's Friday, February 3rd. And while the world awaits daylight savings, the sun still sets early. What thoughts do students and the Purdue Police Department have regarding safety on campus and walking at night? Reporter Andrea Yu has the story. I do think Purdue's a safe campus. Um, it's not a gated community, so you never know who could come in, and that's why I always think, you know, there has to be some personal responsibility for somebody's own safety. Safety on college campuses has been a topic of discussion for some since four students were killed in their off-campus house at the University of Idaho last November. It definitely scared me and my friends when we learned about it. Many students, however, who were not affected by the high-profile case and don't think much about their personal safety in their day-to-day -day lives. Not really at all, to be honest, and never really crosses my mind. Students who may have personal concerns with safety have multiple resources available to them, offered by the Purdue Police Department. Well, we do have safe classes for females, that's free, um, so that's something that um, our female students, faculty, staff can always take advantage of if they'd like to. Chief Weedy says that she doesn't necessarily think women should worry more than men. However, students have voiced their concerns for women in their lives. But like talking to my girlfriend, I know she definitely uh, does not have the same views as me and definitely has those, those fears when walking alone, especially at night. Students can utilize PUPD's Safe Walk program where you can be escorted to your destination by a student patrol or PUPD officer. The program runs 24-7 and its phone number is 765-494-SAFE. You've probably seen a lot of blue light boxes like this around campus. Purdue police suggest that if you're being followed or feel unsafe, you can always use one of these and connect immediately to Purdue police. And know that we are here to help. That's what we're here for. Reporting for Fast Track News, this is Andrea Yu. Parking garages, alleyways, and dimly lit areas are more places where the Purdue Student Security Patrol designates additional sets of eyes to look out for their fellow Boilermakers. Students interested in donating their time to ensure the well-being of others and security on campus can pre-apply for patrol positions on the Purdue University Police Department website. As we look ahead into the week, temperatures are going to be a little warmer than last week, but still pretty chilly. It sounds like boilers will still have to bundle up. Meteorologist Julia Prickett is here to answer all of our questions about the weather this week. Julia? You're absolutely right. We're definitely going to have to stay bundled up, especially today. In West Lafayette, on Purdue's campus, we're seeing mostly cloudy skies with the sunshine trying to peek through quite a bit. Our low is 8 degrees today, and our high is 18. With those wind speeds at approximately 15 miles per hour, we're seeing the temperature being right around 0 degrees, so make sure you're bundling up throughout the day. As we take a look at our hourly forecast, during lunchtime today, we're really going to see the sunshine as it's going to be sunny relatively all day from noon to 3 p.m. with wind speeds approximately 8 to 7 miles per hour, staying within the 12 degrees and 16 degrees range. As we move into dinner time, if you're commuting home from classes or even from work, we're going to see partly cloudy skies with the wind speed approximately 4 miles per hour, making our wind chill at 12 degrees. And into the evening time, 9 p.m. and even midnight, we're going to pick up those wind speeds and it's definitely going to be chilly out. So if you're heading to Harry's, to the bars, or even to a friend's house, make sure you bundle up to keep yourself safe and warm for the evening as we're going to stay relatively in the mid-teens, 15 degrees and 14 degrees at midnight. According to a press release from Purdue last week, the university has officially banned the use of TikTok from school accounts. The decision was made due to cybersecurity concerns about user data privacy. Purdue deleted its account in December of 2022 and has since notified all Purdue colleges and departments with TikTok accounts to do the same. Purdue's institutional accounts will instead focus on using platforms such as Instagram and YouTube for content. The Purdue Board of Trustees meets today to discuss the future of all things Purdue. In their first meeting of 2023, trustees will discuss numerous topics, including the contract of football, Ryan coach, football coach Ryan Walters, 
upgrading Mackey Arena's control room, and a handful of other topics. This will be the first meeting that the trustees have had since Brian Walters became the head coach of Purdue football, and will also be President Chung's first meeting in his new position. Fast Track will have more on that next week. This past Friday, the LGBTQ Center reopened. Hundreds of students visited the new facilities. The new location is right by Hicks Underground Library. Our reporter Daniel Backus has the story. It's a cold afternoon here in West Lafayette, but that's not stopped students from showing up at the grand reopening of the LGBTQ Center. We had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Lowell Kane, the center's director. He's estimated that around 500 people will show up here today. Students have been coming in and out, checking out the new spaces. It's pretty beautiful, so let us show you what it's all about. Last Friday morning marked the reopening of the LGBTQ Center. Previously located in Schliemann Hall, the center is now at the Hicks Undergraduate Library. Head down the stairs and you'll find the stores open to everybody, not just members of the LGBTQ community. This space is not just for members of the LGBTQ community, it's for everybody. When you're in the center, there's no judgment, you can be who you are, you can talk to people, and everyone's really open and engaging. Planning began nearly two years ago, back in April of 2021. It's been a long road since, but they're very proud of the results. Lowell Kane, founding and active director of the center, hopes that this larger space will provide a safe environment where all are welcome. This facility here in Hicks Library is three times the size of our former space. With a bigger space, um, we can have a lot more people come by because uh, admittedly the last one was really yeah. small. Provost Dr. Patrick Wolf also made an appearance, emphasizing the importance of community and belonging. This is an absolutely fantastic space for students, faculty, staff, everybody in the Purdue community can come here and hang out. This is great. It's still a gathering place in a of a sanctuary for students but it's also somewhere where we can like actively do things and like partake in the community and that kind of thing. It was a celebration, a new beginning for the LGBTQ Center and community here at Purdue. Purdue is now ranked a five out of five star campus nationally and we are among the best of the best for LGBTQ friendly campuses. With this new and improved space, the LGBTQ Center hopes to better serve the needs of the community here at Purdue. Reporting for Fast Track News, this is Daniel Vaquez. Center Director Lowell King says the new space is open to everyone and encourages students to stop by and say hello. The facility can be found by taking the stairs down to Hicks Undergraduate Library. Up next, suits, resumes, and elevator pitches. The Craner School of Business hosted its Spring Career Fair on Thursday afternoon. Plus, what predictions do fans have for the Purdue basketball teams as they face off against IU this weekend? Purdue's the best school in the nation right now. I don't think there's any doubt that we don't beat IU. Okay. If we lose, I'm going to transfer. CCSE provides numerous opportunities for students of all majors. This includes the student community, pizza and politics, the Boilers Go to DC Maymaster, internships, and annual events like the talk with Brian Lamb and the research conference. The goal for the CCSE is to help students um, get more educated on politics, government, media in a nonpartisan fashion and to learn how to use the C-SPAN video library uh, for resources, for research of their own, uh, to learn more about politics and obviously the government and journalism. Find out what the Center for C-SPAN can do for you. Hi there, my name is Vikram Jaithluk and I'm the founder and president of the Purdue chapter of the University Blood Initiative. Over the past two years, we've been able to collect over 300 pints of blood to be donated to local hospitals and you can be the next one to help out. I donate my blood at the University Blood Initiative. Hi, I just donated blood through the University Blood Initiative. Hi, I just donated blood through the University Blood Initiative at Purdue. Hi, I donated my blood through the University Blood Initiative at Purdue. And I donated my blood at University Blood Initiative at Purdue. Companies were welcomed at the Cranert School of Business Career Fair on Wednesday and Thursday. We will see what students in the school had to say about the experiences connecting with recruiters. Reporter Rachel Tai has the story. Job and internship hunting has always been a big challenge for college students. But thanks to Purdue, students can frequently get professional opportunities to connect with different companies in different industries. We are here at the Cranert Spring Career Fair hosted by the School of Management Employers Forum happened at Corac. With hundreds of students attending, this career fair is a great opportunity to build students' corporate presence. Purdue students talk about their feelings about today's event. Good energy, good atmosphere. I feel like um, everybody that's here is very friendly and nice and very welcoming, so it's easy to go up and talk to different booths. 
um, established connections for internships, opportunities, association connections, anything that would help us crowner students in the future, basically. I found a lot of company that is in my uh, interest and uh, I feel like I did a pretty good job and hopefully I can get what I want. Many companies attend this career fair because this can also help them hire talent from the Credit School of Management. One of Purdue's alumni, Krista Serratos, shares her perspective from a recruiter. It's a really good selection. I've actually talked to a couple of freshmen, and I think that's kind of amazing. Yeah, freshmen, so they're getting out there like really early, and that's what I really value about Purdue University students is they're kind of like those go-getters, which is what we admire as a company. We want people who have like that drive and initiative. SMEF hosts the career fair twice a year to help Purdue students expand their future career and help them see what they want to do post-graduation. You know, we think it's important um, for students to get opportunities um, over the summer, spring, fall, um, get that real-world experience while being a student, and then it sets them up for their career afterwards. Report from West Lafayette, this is Rachel Tai. Interested in what internships and professional opportunities are available in your area of study? Visit the Center of Career Opportunities website for a rundown of more recruitment events scheduled this spring. We wish luck to the Boilers who attended Cranert's Career Fair and to those who plan to register for them in the future. After defeating Nittany Lions on Wednesday, Purdue Boilermakers stay in first place. Now, the entire West Lafayette's attention is on the Saturday game between Purdue and IU. Our reporter Lee Chow Shen was able to talk to fans this Wednesday. Let's see what they're expecting for this Saturday. Purdue is facing 14-7 Nittany Lions. All I'm going to tell you, if they can beat IU, we're going to be IU too. First off, IU sucks. That's, that's the biggest thing in Purdue history, IU sucks. I think we're, we're on top for the uh, all-time record. We're going we're gonna to add one more win to that. You know, at the end of the day, IU's our little brother. Uh, in the last, I think, 10 years, they've only won twice. So really not too worried about our little brother down south. Uh, they've been on a little bit of a hot streak. They uh, lost to Maryland, though. So not too concerned, not too concerned at all. I think it's going to be a close game because IU's got some really good players as well. But I think we're going to come out on top. I think we'll just come in and beat them, beat them up, you know, like the Boilers always do. They can fight to the end. I think Edie's going to dominate Trace, and we're going to win by 10. IU still sucks. Purdue by a million. Yeah, Edie's going to show everyone why Trace Jackson Davis is not an endpoint candidate. I think it's going to be maybe our most challenging road game being away at IU, but I think we can absolutely pull it off. Mm -hmm. Purdue's the best school in the nation right now. I don't think there's any doubt that we don't beat IU. Okay. If we lose, I'm going to transfer. IU, IU sucks! sucks. IU sucks. IU sucks. IU sucks. IU sucks. Just how cold will the temperatures get down to this week? Make sure to stay tuned to find out what the temperatures will be like this weekend, especially for the Purdue versus IU game. I am the president of the ski club. I am pretty decent at skiing, I would say, but I still am cautious and reserved when I skied in. Um, Copper, one of the other officers, um, was like, we're hitting this today. The last day, we're going to do it, and you're going to come up with me. He really convinced me, and we got to the top of the lift, and as we were going up the lift, the lift was literally like this. <laughs> then we get to the top, and I was angry. We're looking over this ridge, and you can't see where the hill goes. You're looking over the edge, and you don't see anything. Once I got over that little ridge, and I was able to kind of see where I was going, once I got to the bottom, it was like a great accomplishment. If you want to have the time of your life, definitely check out Purdue Ski and Snowboard Club. Are you looking for a new hobby? Or do you want to have a fun evening with your friends? Then come climb to new heights at the Co-Rec Climbing Wall.
Saturday is a big day for the Boilermakers as we're going to be taking on our fellow rival, the Indiana Hoosiers. So let's take a look at the West Lafayette forecast for Saturday's game. At 8 a.m., we're going to see partly cloudy skies with that sunshine trying to peek through with 19 degrees being our high at 8 a.m. with the wind chill going to be approximately 5 degrees. And as we move into lunchtime at 12, it's going to be cloudy skies, not a lot of sunshine, but we're going to see 31 degrees and the wind speeds start to pick up with the wind chill being 16 degrees. As we move into closer to tip off time around 4 p.m., still same clouds and we're going to see the wind chill be 26 degrees as our wind speeds won't let up on us and stay at approximately 17 miles per hour. But overall, that is our high for Saturday is 39 degrees at 4 p.m. tip off time. As we take a look into our weekend forecast, we're going to see Saturday, Purdue versus IU, our high being 40 degrees and our low being 18. And as we move into Sunday, hopefully celebrating a Boilermaker win, we're going to see cloudy skies with the wind staying at approximately 16 miles per hour, with our high being in the mid 40s and our low being in the higher 20s as well. As we take a look at our national forecast, we're seeing our temperatures starting to fluctuate a little bit from those single digits in the wind chills up to even the mid 40s. So as you can see, this blue and dark blue right here is really what's covering over the Midwest and especially Indiana right now. But as the week goes on, we're going to see all this blue really start to push out and seeing this green and yellow really start to rise, which will make our temperatures rise. So as we move into our seven day forecast, again, we're going to see Friday, Saturday, Sunday really be our highs of 18 degrees and then 39 degrees on Saturday. But as we move into Monday and Tuesday into the rest of the week, we're going to see those temperatures really start to rise. As our high is 48 degrees on Monday with our low being 29 with partly cloudy skies. And as we move into Tuesday, make sure to pack an umbrella because we have a 70% chance of rainfall with our high being 50 degrees for the week on Tuesday and low 36. Wednesday and Thursday, still partly cloudy skies and maybe a little bit of rain showers on Thursday, but our highs are really going to stay in the mid 40s and our lows staying in the mid 30s as well. This is basketball week. Seats will be full, house will be divided. The women's basketball team will test it in their sold out showdown against IU this Sunday. I'm Lee Chao Shen. Don't go away. Sports will be the next. Here we go again. Another season under the lights of Mackey Arena. And at first glance, things may seem familiar, but make no mistake, a lot has changed. Our fans, louder. Our players, better. A lot better. This is the season where things change. The season where we're not defined by the moments of yesterday. This is the season where we chase the promised land. The season where records are broken. The season where history is made. Boilermaker basketball has returned. Every rebound, every three, every outrageous dunk. It's all right here on Fast Track. Purdue women's basketball team is on a mission to debond the main of home court advantage as they stalk their second away game win. This time knocking Ohio State from their number two spot in the AP pool top five this past Sunday night. With less than 50 seconds left to finish the fourth quarter, the team was at a back to force duel for position of the ball. But it was Abby Ellis, three points line shot, and it silenced the Ohio State Stadium and it sealed the Boilermaker victory for a score 73 to 65. For a season of women's basketball like no other in history, there isn't a single empty seat left to the snug at the upcoming game versus Purdue's rival IU at Mackey Arena this Sunday. According to Purdue Women's Basketball Instagram page, this is the first time in 23 years and the bleachers are packed from shoulders to shoulders to help support our women's basketball team. Not a single second on the court was wasted by Purdue's number zero Mason Gillis, where he broke Purdue's record for the most three-pointers in a single game at Mackey as they battled Penn State Wednesday night. Gillis set a new record at nine and a new personal record of 29 points in one game, more than double his previous record of 14. Gillis' athletic drive and optimistic mindset on the floor helped boost the Boilermaker spirits in the first quarter and 
absolutely ignite the crowd at Mackey Arena throughout the rest of the night. Zach Eady left no opportunity for a rebound to slip away. The 7'4 center player almost balanced his number 13 rebounds to 18 points made through the game. In total, the game resulted in Purdue with a 20 point advantage at a final score of 80 to 60. The Purdue men's team currently stand number one on the Big Ten list and will travel to Bloomington on Saturday to play the rival IU. The Purdue men's basketball team hosted the Michigan State Spartans last Sunday, and wow, what a game that was! Complete domination as Boilermaker went 77 to 61. Our reporter Brandon Gorham took us to the scene. What an amazing environment it is here in Mac Arena. The paint crew is rocking. It's a whiteout. We've seen head coach Ryan Walters make an appearance. We've seen some recruits, highly recounted recruits of the football and basketball team. It is an amazing environment, topped off with the Boilermakers wearing new retro uniforms. Fans were on their feet cheering like they've never cheered before, watching in awe as Zach Eady had one of the best performances he has ever had. MVP chants echoed through the arena as Eady subbed out in the final two minutes with a new career high of 38 points. Whether it was his classic spinning hook shot or layups and dunks over shorter Spartans, Eady was simply unstoppable. And it kind of showed, like, it, it kind of got me going when they started fouling me, they started hacking me, they started doing things, you know, they like busted my lip in the second half. Um, and those things kind of got me going a little bit. When it wasn't Edie dominating the paint, it was David Jenkins finding his shooting stroke coming off the bench. It's been a new role for him, as he was the scorer and starter on his previous teams, but all he cares about now is winning. At the end of the day, I'm going to do whatever role is, is given for me. You know what I mean? I just want to win at the end of the day. We're the number one team in the country and um, because of how unselfish we are. The unselfishness was on display by the 21 total assists Purdue accumulated. The Boilermakers moved the ball to find open shooters, and it resulted in great efficiency, 50% from the field and 41% from behind the arc. That efficiency rendered solid performances by A.J. Hoggard and Jade Nakins pointless. It was an unbelievable scene from before and after the game. Reporting from a now empty Mackey Arena, this is Brendan Gorham reporting for Fast Track News. Zach Eady is on top of NCAA potential draft pick with 38 points and 13 rebounds, and he's a prospect for the top player of the year. The Penn Crew make a surprise appearance to and travel and offer their support to Kokomo High School basketball player which Purdue recruiters have their eyes on. Brandon Gorm has the story. It's not every day that you get an opportunity to watch ESPN's number four ranked recruit play basketball. That's why when Flory Badunga and the Kokomo Wildcats traveled to play at Jefferson High School, local Purdue fans took notice, including four players on the basketball team, Fletcher Lawyer, Camden Heidi, Mason Gillis, and Braden Smith. Uh, definitely just coming out, um, kind of support, um, come out to a high school game, kind of just check it out, um, watch Glory play a little bit and just seeing uh, how things are going. While they weren't necessarily high school rivals, Smith and Badunga played each other twice back when Smith was a senior. Indiana Mr. Basketball won the first matchup, but the rematch was different. Yeah, well, we lost, so uh, <laughs> honestly not, very, not a happy uh, memory. Badunga knocked Smith's Westfield Shamrocks out of the state quarterfinals. Coming into this matchup versus Jefferson, he was averaging 19 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 blocks per game. His height and athleticism was on display as he was clearly much taller and more athletic than anyone else on the court, explaining why coaches such as Matt Painter and Kentucky's John Calipari have recruited him so hard. In the end, Kokomo came out victorious, winning 49-43 over Jefferson after a gritty 14 points and 15 rebound performance by Badunga. As the game was wrapping up, the Broncos student section made sure to give Badunga a farewell chant as he shot free throws. I say thank you to them. Like, that gave me motivation, so I would say keep doing that. That's great for me, so thank you. After the game concluded, 
fans rush to line up for pictures and autographs. Badunga has yet to commit to a school, but there are a lot of Boilermaker fans and at least four current players who hope he will choose Purdue. From Jefferson High School, this is Brendan Gorm reporting for Fast Track News. Purdue wrestling face off against the number 25 Indiana Hoosier on Sunday in what ended up being a tough loss of 17 to 16. The Boilermaker helped in the lead for 9 of 10 weights, but were down in by bonus point win for the Hoosiers. A few of the Boilermakers did come out with a decision win for this match. Number 6 ranked Kendall Coleman had an easy win with a 10-3 decision. The redshirt senior has a 4 takedowns with 292 overall in his career. Number 3 Matt Ramos and number 14 Parker Phileas both also followed the wins. Ramos had a 7-1 win overall Jacob Morton and Phileas followed with a bonus point victory of 15-3 over Cannon Brooks. The Boilers were complete against ne Nebraska at home on Saturday. All right, that's a wrap for the sports. The news is back right after the quick timeout. Being involved in the three-year program at Purdue made it easier to say to myself, I could get done in three years. The three-year program helped save me a ton of money. And not completing my fourth year, I would save around $30,000. It will give you an advantage, if anything. Doing the three-year program at Purdue has shown me that I have motivation to do whatever it takes to get my degree. I work for Student Life because I'm able to develop leadership skills that will carry over after college. I work in Student Life because I'm developing time management skills and friendships that will last a lifetime. Our reporter Daniel Baquess went to the walk to ask the question of the week. This time around, what's your favorite place to study? Here's what students had to say. We're back on the street for question of the week. This time, what's your favorite place to study? Uh, if I can get it, it's the Red Seats and Walk or um, the Nelson Lounge. My favorite place to study would be Hicks because at pretty much any time of the day, you're able to find an open table space. The Union. Why? Um, I like to get Starbucks. Uh, mostly just wherever my next class is. I mean, I, I study in the horticulture building a lot near the front door. Um, Cheney Hall of Science. Why? Um, I like how it is. I like the atmosphere. What about you? Walk for me, the quiet study room. Uh, probably Hicks. It's open all the time. Any other reason? It's quiet. Um, Hicks. Why? It's quiet and I can focus on my homework in school. All right. Sir, do you have a favorite place to study on campus? <laughs> Hello. Um, I don't really have one. Looking ahead at the next seven days, we're really going to see those mid-40s and even low-50s, with our lows only, be, only being in the mid-30s. But with that, we may have to pay a price as we expect some rain showers on Tuesday, Thursday, looking into next week. So looking into the next seven days, we're going to see those rise in temperatures, which we'll really enjoy as we expect mid 40s and even low 50s. But will we see more winter? The groundhog says so. We may be seeing those next six weeks of winter, John and Ella, but we'll have to wait and see to find out. Ivan Porras is here with social media. Hey Boilers, Ivan Porras here, this week's social media director for Fast Track News. Have you been keeping up, keeping up with us on socials? Purdue basketball has been reeling in win after win, and we have the reels that get you exclusive views on all the game day energy. Follow and set your notifications on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok at Fast Track News for details on sports, campus events, weather, and more. Thanks, Ivan. And that's it for our second newscast of the spring semester. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you join us next week for more campus news, weather, and sports. Have a wonderful weekend, Boilermakers.